Hi there, Adam Gower here. Thanks so much for joining me today for the latest episode of the Real Estate Crowdfunding Show, Syndication in the Digital Age. If you want to raise money for your real estate projects online using the best of class social media and digital marketing techniques, you are in the right place. My very special guest today is Emily Johnson, who is content manager at the real estate crowdfunding platform Ground Floor. Incidentally, I spoke to Ground Floor's founder and CEO, Brian Daly, in another podcast that you'll find a link to in the show notes for today's episode on the gowercrowd.com forward slash podcast page, where I've also included all the relevant links discussed in today's show. Emily is responsible for all content production and distribution at Ground Floor, and does she do a good job? right? Just check out their social media presence and you will see what I mean. And you'll find the links to those again at gowercrowd.com forward slash podcast. Among the things that you're going to learn today are which are the big four social media platforms that you need to be using for raising capital online, content production best practices, how to engage your online investor community and much more. And to be as socially friendly as I can be, I've also created a bunch of short video highlight clips of my conversation with Emily so that you can get directly to the most tangible, actionable details as quickly as possible. I'm going to be rolling those out on all my social media channels so you can find them at gowercrowd.com forward slash podcast on the show notes page for this episode. I've also included an advanced training video at that link where you'll learn about the key components to a successful online capital raise using social media. It runs about 25 minutes and it's packed with detailed information that you can immediately put to use to raise money for your projects. So keeping it short and sweet, just like me, here's Emily Johnson, content manager at the real estate crowdfunding site, Ground Floor. But yeah, so I'm ready when you are. All right, good. So actually, let me have a, another little uh, swig of vodka here. Hold on. <laughs> get yourself all liquored up. Yeah, get right in the right mood. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I always tell my students when I'm teaching at, uh, you know, at university. I'll right, quick. right. <laughs> Got to get yourself in the right frame of mind. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Emily, tell me actually who you are and, uh, and what... What is your background in, uh, in, in social media and, and digital marketing? And how did you come to Ground Floor? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as uh, I mentioned before, my name is Emily Johnson. I am, uh, gosh, how old am I now? 28? <laughs> all, the, all, all the years run together. You are the perfect um, age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, um, so I'm 28 years old. I am uh, the content manager for Ground Floor. And you know, by content manager, that means... I am in charge of basically all of the outward facing content um, that is on the, all of our social media channels. So we have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Okay. Um, and so I'm in charge of all of the content that goes out there. If we ever end up bringing in other social media sites um, into the ground floor family, then I will also be in charge of all of those. Um, so, and then I'm also in charge of the content that goes out on the blog. And, um, you know, we're currently also in the process of doing some uh, outward facing email newsletters. And so I'm in charge of that as well. So basically kind of everything that's outward facing for um, our uh, for our investors and for our borrowers, that's um, on me. I'm creating that. OK, let me ask you a question. Actually. Yeah. Let me jump in ask a... So why Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and Twitter? So those ones. Um, in, you know, are just kind of the main, those are sort of the big four, right? Um, in terms of social media, those are the ones that, you know, are the biggest that, you know, people are using all the time. Um, and also that make the most sense for our business. Um, you know, so there are obviously a ton a ton of social media channels out there. I mean, any kind of application um, can be considered to be social media if the purpose of it is to, you know, connect with people to, um, you know, form relationships with, with, uh, with other people, you know, on a particular platform. So, you know, something like um, any of these crowdfunding review sites, the big forums can also be kind of considered to be social media because the purpose of them is that people are, you know, connecting and being social on them. Um, 
Now, the reason that we don't have, say, some of these other ones, the other big ones that you hear about, something like Snapchat, right. um, is just because it doesn't really make sense for our particular business to be on Snapchat, um, at least not right now. So what is, the, what, are the, what is it about these four then that do make them relevant? Can you kind of drill down on that? Yeah, absolutely. The, so yeah. all of them are kind of, and you know, I'm sure uh, you're aware and I'm sure um, your audience is aware kind of of the, the innate differences between these platforms, right? And so each one of them is kind of doing a different sort of thing. They're kind of performing a different function. So for example, LinkedIn, it's all about professional networking. Um, and so obviously that makes sense for our business because we want to be, you know, on there, not only to be posting our jobs and, and, you know, giving updates for the company and everything like that, but there's, there are a lot of groups on LinkedIn, professional groups, people kind of chat, there's thought leadership that's happening. We want to make sure that we're adding to that conversation. Um, Twitter is also a really good one as well. There are a lot of Twitter is, is much more kind of in the moment content, you know, keep something happens, people are tweeting about it, somebody retweets. Um, so that's really important for us to be on that platform, because, you know, not only can we tweet about our own updates in real time, sort of as things are happening, but also kind of chime in in some of these more, these broader conversations that are happening. So a perfect example of this is actually yesterday, I tweeted out something about um, the fact that the Time 100 list had just come out. And one of the people that was named to this list was uh, this woman. Her name's Aileen. So I'm, I'm blanking on her last name. But anyway, um, she is actually the, the founder of an organization that's called All Raise, which is an organization that's dedicated to promoting diversity hmm. um, in startups, which is obviously a perfect, perfect segue for, for ground floor to get involved with that conversation as well, because that's something, you know, as a startup company and as a company who has a value of diversity, um, it makes sense for us to be on there and to be chiming into those kinds of conversations. And what so that's about kind of the, Twitter? And what about the demographics on these sites? Because one tends to think that LinkedIn and Twitter probably tends older, whereas Instagram and I don't know, Facebook, tens young. I mean, talk about the demographics a little and, and how yeah, it works. Absolutely. So actually it's kind of funny that you mentioned Facebook because Facebook now the demographic tends, um, it, it has shifted a little bit older just because, you know, more and more people are on it. I mean, Facebook is by far the biggest one um, just because there's just so much functionality with Facebook um, that, that happened in the years since it was created. Um, and so now there's just so much on it and there's, it, it's just friendly for everybody so that the demographic is actually not younger anymore. It's actually kind of more, um, skewing a little bit older than what it's traditionally been skewing. But yeah, I mean, it kind of just depends. I mean, Instagram for sure is definitely, I mean, there are a lot of people on Instagram, but I would say that it definitely skews younger. Um, and you know, that also has value for our company as well, you know, so we, one of, um, the things that we're very passionate about. And as uh, you talked about in your previous conversation with our uh, co-founder and CEO, Brian Daly, is that one of our, you know, big goals is we're trying to open up real estate um, investing opportunities so that everybody can have access to them. Mm. And a lot of people, you know, who are learning about personal finance and learning about, you know, investing are younger people. And that's a good thing. Um, and so we do want to be able to reach those people. And so Instagram is a great platform to be able to do that. And let me ask you this then, is that, is there a difference in the kind of content that you put out on these different platforms because of the nature of the platform itself? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have to be per se. I mean, I guess it sort of just depends on, you know, how you set up your social media accounts, but in general, yes. So Instagram, for example, um, you know, since it, it does skew a little bit younger, since there are, it, it's, it's very image focused, um, you're going to, you're not going to be as kind of buttoned up and professional as you would be on LinkedIn on Instagram, because it's just a different audience and, and it's just a different platform. Mm. Um, you know, not saying that one is better than the other. It's just, they're different. Right. And, um, so there's, there's different things that you have to think about. So something that I would post on Instagram, you know, if I would make a post about, um, I don't know, or if I made a, 
if I made a story um, about, say, you know, we, we decorated an employee's desk for their birthday or for something wow. like that. Um, that. That's a great, great thing to share on Instagram, especially in stories, because it kind of gives you like a little behind the scenes of, oh, you know, this is the work environment. But you wouldn't necessarily post that on LinkedIn because on LinkedIn, you're kind of more sharing your professional accomplishments, you know, giving company updates. It just doesn't really have a place there, if that makes right. sense. Right. Yeah, absolutely makes a place. Mm -hmm. Let me drill down on that a little bit. Why? Sure. What is the advantage of showing the behind the scenes, right? Here we decorated somebody's desk. Right. <laughs> Why is that? How does that enhance the general approach that we all have online, which is to try and attract investors and and sponsors to our platform. So why is that important? Tell me about that. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's actually a really great question. And it's something that I was um, thinking a lot about um, when you know coming into this, into this uh, podcast here. And it all kind of boils down to the fact that if you think about what social media is, at its very, very base level, right, is you're going on there to be social and you're going on there to create relationships. Um, you know, obviously, as we just discussed, you know, there are different relationships that come from different platforms, but the ultimate goal is the same. So you're on there to create relationships, to begin conversations with people. And so in my view, what that means is you're showing your potential, you know, customers and your existing customers, whoever's following you, um, you're showing them a very holistic view of what your company is. Mm. Um, you're not social media and, and, and being on social media as a business, it's very tempting to go on social media or create an account and, you know, just try to push your product or just try to sell your, you know, whatever it is that you're selling. So if you're, you know, a clothing brand, it's very, very easy to just go on there and try to just be like, Hey, look at this beautiful dress, buy it. But if you think <laughs> about it, you know, here's the link to buy it or, or look at this person where, you know what I mean? But if you think about it mm. in the same way that you, you would feel, it, it would feel very intrusive to you to have a salesperson knocking at your door, mm -hmm. just trying to sell something like, hi, I just stopping by and wanting to sell this to you. It's very intrusive to have somebody who, who's on your social media, you know, timeline or feed or whatever, who's, the only thing they're ever doing is trying to sell you things. Mm -hmm. It feels very intrusive. It's unwelcome. You're not going to want to follow them anymore. You're going to be very annoyed with them. Um, so what you kind of have to do on social media is you have to sell not just your product, you sell your company, um, you sell your brand. Um, and what that, you know, it, that differs from brand to brand, obviously. But for us, what that means is we're showing our customers who we are, who is ground floor, what are we, I mean, not just what we do, but who we are, what we believe, how we take care of each other, how we take care of our customers, um, you know, why our, why we feel our work is important, why we feel you should think our work is important. Um, it's not just about, you know, just, just selling our, our, our product to people. And so that's why I think it's important to, you know, every so often to kind of have these behind the scenes looks into the company just to, just to show, I mean, you know, people won't want to do business with us, with us if they don't think that we, you know, are, are nice. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Like, exactly. Uh, right. I mean, you're also, the, you're creating a relationship. Yes. Right? And exactly. And, and, and that really, you know, and people connect with people, right? So showing the people who, who are behind the platform is really important to, to, you know, have your customers and your, and your following feel as though they know you and feel as though they can connect with you on a real level. Right. Exactly. So what have been the most effective so far? What have you found to be the biggest challenges and what have you found to be the most effective in this world of capital raising and crowdfunding in real estate? Yeah, I mean, I, so I think some of the, the challenges that we face um, is in part based on the fact that our, what we offer to people is still new and it's still something that people are learning about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even before coming to this company, I didn't know a lot about crowdfunded real estate. Um, and so it's still not something that's really widely talked about. And, it, it, you know, and, and in fact, it's also very new anyway. I mean, it's just been around for the past few years. Right. 
So I think the biggest challenge is just educating people on, hey, this is what we are. Um, this is kind of how we work and doing that in a way that, you know, you're not writing paragraph on, upon paragraph on an Instagram caption to explain what you are to kind of <laughs> get it, you know, into bite sized little pieces so that people mm. can read it, digest it, be interested, come back for more. Mm. Um, and then the, another challenge that we face that I face actually a lot is because we operate on both sides. So, you know, we have um, the, the loans that we put on our platform for people to invest in. And then on the flip side, we, in order to get those loans on our platform, we offer loans to people who are creating um, or to people who are doing renovation projects. Mm -hmm. And so trying to balance those two interests and make sure that we're, you know, putting out content that is geared towards our investors and also that is geared toward our, toward our borrowers and making sure that that all fits together in a very cohesive way. Yeah. So, and that is a challenge, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so, right. Because yeah. you're actually appealing to two separate audiences. Exactly. But the you know, there is honestly a lot, it, there, there can be a lot of overlap there because you know, one of the things that we love about our, about our audience is the fact that, you know, a lot of our investors are borrowers too. I mean, they, they have enjoyed their experience borrowing with us. And so they're also investing with us. Hmm. Um, and then in this, in, in kind of a similar way, a lot of the people who are um, investing in us as a company who are becoming shareholders with us, were already investors on our platform. Um, so it's kind of, you know, so the, the audiences are separate, but there is a lot of overlap there. Interesting. <clears throat> so which platforms have you found to be the most effective and, and what kind of content have you found to be the most effective on those platforms? Um, that's an interesting question. I, I don't know if I would really say that one of them is, you know, the best one. I mean, you know, as I mentioned before, they all kind of serve different purposes, um, but you know, Instagram is my personal favorite, so I can talk about that a lot. Um, okay. but I mean, but again, you know, I think each platform off offers a really unique set of tools that, you know, you can use to take that you can, um, use to kind of, uh, promote your, your, your mission, promote your business, et cetera. Um, and some, so some examples of that, uh, we on Instagram, you know, are using a lot of the native tools that are now on there. Um, so Instagram stories, I do at least one Instagram story every day. Um, mm. That tends to, you know, get a lot of views. Uh, we are experimenting with doing Facebook Live for our equity raise that we have going on right now. And so I do an, a Facebook Live uh, little video every Friday. Um, so I'll be doing one tomorrow at 2 p.m. <laughs> okay, um, perfect. Every Friday at 2, right? Every Friday, every Friday at 2 until we, uh, until our equity raise is completed. But, um, and just, you know, so, so e each one of these, I mean, it's, it's always with social media because social, me social media changes so much. And there's, I feel like, you know, every week there's something new that has come out, you know, a new tool or a new, you know, cool little thing that you can add in, um, you know, it's very much social media, again, is still a very new field for a lot for a lot of businesses. And so, you know, in large part, sometimes it's a trial and error to see whether or not, you know, you're getting the engagement that you're looking for, you know, using one tool um, versus another one. So, you know, with our Facebook Live, for example, you know, if we find that it, you know, maybe wasn't quite as effective as we wanted it to be, I, you know, we can use our, our um, the things that we learned from 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 this particular campaign that we're doing and let that inform what we do for next time. And, and Emily, how do you stay on top of all these changes? What is the process for doing that? Yeah. So that's a great question as well. There are so, so many changes all the time. Um, and honestly, a lot of what I do is I'm just reading. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of resources out there. One of my personal favorites is a, uh, a blog put out by the team at later, which is an Instagram scheduling platform. Mm. And they are always super on top of covering sort of the new changes with Instagram. So whenever they're, you know, Instagram rolls out, you know, a new feature or when they change their algorithm or any that kind of stuff, they, there's always a blog post there about that. So I love that, that resource. Is that Taylor, Taylor at later. 
so the company is called later, but yeah, yeah. so that, so he is somebody who works there. Okay. Um, but that's, yeah. those are the emails, right? Cause exactly. I get those emails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're really good, aren't they? Yeah, they I, are they're good. Great. They're, yeah, yeah. they're super informative and, and you know, again, I mean, they're, they're just very, I mean, cause that's their whole business. So they're on top of it. Um, and I always feel like I come away from reading any of their blog posts with a much greater understanding of kind of how Instagram works and the kind of the process behind why they decided to introduce what they introduced. Interesting. Um, and then also all of the platforms have their own blogs and have their own, you know, social handles where they post news and updates and things like that. And so those are always really great resources as well. Um, Facebook in particular has a massive, massive, um, I forget what it's called. I think it's, it, it's basically like this huge kind of forum for people who are using Facebook, um, for their business. And so it's, they have tutorial videos, they have, um, kind of learning modules that you can take. You can actually get certified in Facebook business. Uh, and that's that all of that is run literally from the Facebook business, you know, this little help section that I'm talking about. Mm. Um, yeah, my wife actually thinks that I'm certifiable for my interest in social media. <laughs> <laughs> not quite the same. Different thing, but not quite going, the same. that's where she thinks I'm <laughs> headed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she'll make you a certificate if you ask her. <laughs> um, let me yeah, ask you, but, let, yeah, go ahead. You were going to say. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, you know, honestly, like everything else, I mean, it's, it's, I would always consider myself to be a student of social media. And I, you know, even if I do this for 20 years, I mean, there's going to be something new that comes out in the 21st year. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's, there's, there's always going to be new things. And so I personally love that because it's really fun to learn and it's really fun to kind of see how people are are, you know, using social media, um, in, in new and innovative ways. And it, it's always really cool to see what, how, how, you know, we can incorporate the new things that are coming out into our, our existing strategies and into our existing, um, you know, accounts. So let me ask you this. How do you, what are, what are best practices in your experience for generating content? You know, you work for a, an important major company and clearly people want to know what the principals are doing, mm -hmm. right? but they're very Absolutely. busy. So how do you, how do you, what are best practices for creating content and what kind of content do you create or can you create? Sure. Um, so I, uh, I guess I'll just talk about for the, at least for right now in, um, in terms of kind of how we do things or how I do things, what my process is. And so basically what, you know, again, it all kind of boils down to what are you trying to get across? What do you, what do you, how do you add value? How are you adding value to your followers lives? Um, I think that's a fundamental question that every business who's on social media needs to ask, you know, um, how can your posts and your account be useful to other people. What, who, who is your audience and what do they want and what do they like? And, you know, so again, that goes back to this whole idea, you know, you're not going to want to push, 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 push selling your product all the time because your, your following doesn't like that. I mean, they might want it sometimes, but not all the time. Um, so then you think about, okay, so now you have a better idea of who you, you have an idea of what your business is. You have an idea of who your following is. Um, then you kind of just, create the content that they want to see and how, how I've done that for ground floor is, you know, really taken a step back and thought about, okay, we have the, the section of it that's for investors, the section that's for borrowers. Um, I also, you know, we also want to share again, sort of who we are as a company. Um, so sharing kind of a little bit of behind the scenes, if it, you know, focusing on the, the, team members that we have here. Um, you know, I'll put out some content about <laughs> personal finance, because again, as I mentioned before, a lot of people who stumble upon us maybe have just started on the investing journey or, you know, are just, just learning about the fact that uh, real estate investing even exists and is a thing and they can do it. Um, and you know, so kind of putting all of that together and then also sharing updates about our company. So things like when we get featured on, uh, if somebody writes a, a, a press feature about us or if we win an award, um, something like that. 
And then finally, um, uh, since again, we are a real estate, crowdfunded real estate investment platform is about the houses. Uh, so the houses that we're working on, the houses that are that our borrowers have completed and that our investors have invested in, you know, kind of sharing updates about that sort of before and after photos, because, you know, who doesn't love a good before and after photo of a, of a beautiful house. Um, so, yeah. So when you think about all of those things, that's a lot of content that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, you know, it, it's easy to get stuck on the fact, that, oh, well, I have to sell my product. Well, I mean, you, you can, but there's also so much other stuff that touches on that, that you can also bring in as well to, again, give this holistic picture of what this company is. So what you've described is the, is the content of the content, right? Exactly. What yeah. about the <laughs> mechanics of creating the content? How do you do that? Is that, do you uh, record conversations and transcribe them? Do you do videos? How do you, like, how do you actually create, what is the process of actually creating the content itself? Oh, gosh. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, so if I'm understanding your question correctly, so you're, you're asking, you know, basically, where do I get the information from? Yeah. And, and what format does that information come in? Is it? Gotcha. Uh, yeah. And then how yeah. do you use that and adapt it to the various channels, like the mechanics behind it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. You know, I think for, for us, um, that, that's a big part of my role is to kind of take all of the information that is given, you know, in our, on our website, in our, um, like the, the, the uh, company meetings that we have that talk about, uh, you know, the, 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 I'm completely blanking on this, the, the proper word for it, but, um, but and in other words, like, for example, say, yeah. Mm -hmm. like how do you get photographs? Do people send you photographs or do you have somebody walking around? Like you talked about for Instagram. Oh, sorry. Right got dark in here. <laughs> got to move a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, I do have to move a little bit. Uh, that happens, right? Um, I've got like this array of lights going on. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> if, if I switched them off, I'd be in a dark room. Array. <laughs> um, uh, so what I meant was like, so for example, what I will do with our conversation right. is I will transcribe it. I'll use right. an AI system to transcribe it. Then I'll clean up the transcript. Then I'll look at that transcript. And mm. I'll, if, if we speak for half an hour, it'll be about 5,000 words. Okay. So I'll transcribe that down into 800 to 1,000 word thought leadership piece that will go out as as a written document, right? We've got a video, we've got audio, we've got written. So what are the processes that you use? How do you collate this? Or how might somebody imagine actually cre creating the content, actually physically creating it and putting it up there? Yeah, so in terms of um, photographs and things like that, so a lot of them, I mean, the, some of the ones that you'll see on, you know, for example, our Instagram or our Facebook or whatever that are photographs actually of our office, I take those. Ah. Um, so, and I'm just, you know, literally using my handy dandy phone here. <laughs> that. And, you know, just editing them on, on various editing apps and whatever to make it look pretty. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's one way that we'll get photos is if I actually physically take them. If we ever, sometimes uh, in the past, actually, we've had somebody come in and take more professional photos of the office, of people working. Um, so I have access to all of those to use. Um, we have created some video content as well. And so those if I, you know, we can, we have a, a Vimeo channel and we're working on getting access back to our YouTube channel because for whatever reason it's, I can't access it right now. So we're going to work on that. But um, so yeah, so all, you know, all of these, all of this content is stuff that we're creating. It's, it's things that go through, you know, so a lot of it in terms of the, the copy Mm -hmm. is come, comes from my head. And then, you know, <laughs> from there, if I have questions, you know, I, I, um, you know, we'll, we'll bring it to my manager, bring it to whoever the, the, the party is or, or to Brian or whatever. There's a lot of eyes on it just to make sure that everything is okay. Yes. And, okay. um, you know, so that my manager who is the, the VP of marketing is, you know, constantly looking over everything because how kind of how, I do things and most social media managers for major businesses do things is you actually create content in bulk 
um, and you, you schedule it out. So it's not, you're not sitting there every day at, you know, nine o'clock in the morning typing something to post it manually. It's, it's, there's, there's a ton of software out there that um, can help you like pre-schedule your posts. Um, so you don't have to physically be online every second of every day to make sure that you're typing out exactly the right thing that you want to say. So that's a really useful thing. Um, and then, you know, we'll use periodically, people will send us pictures. Uh, if, if any of our team members go out into the field to, you know, for example, our asset management team goes out into the field pretty often, pretty much on a weekly basis to visit properties. Um, and, you know, oftentimes they'll take pictures. Uh, you know, I've gotten to chat with some of our local borrowers um, and, and not even local borrowers, honestly, you know, people who are borrowing from wherever. Uh, and, and most people, you know, if, if they have sent us pictures or if they've, you know, talked about us on Facebook or, or tagged us in something, you know, I'll just reach out and be like, hey, would you be interested? You know, thanks so much for tagging us. Would you be interested in um, chatting with me for a little bit, I'd love to write something up about you or, or feature your post or feature your project or, you know, um, so, you know, it's, it's a variety of different ways we get, we actually get the content that, that we're using. Fascinating. <clears throat> now, um, engagement. Let me ask you this then. Sure. About engagement on social media. And I'm not going to try and put words into your mouth. I'm wondering, I'm <laughs> okay. wondering if you're going to say what I think. Right? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I thought as well. But in terms of engagement, you know, when you see a, uh, a, a silly cat video, right? There okay. might be a million views of it, right? right? Just incredible engagement. But what I've noticed with real estate crowdfunding is that there is very little actual engagement on the social media sites. Is that something that you've experienced? And is it important, do you think, actually to stimulate engagement? I mean, we're asking people to invest money with us. So what, right. you know, so how, how do you relate to engagement in our world versus how people might typically imagine social media engagement might look? Yeah. Um, so I think engagement is probably, you know, more than the number of followers or anything like that, that you have engagement is probably the best way that you can gauge how close your community that you're building for yourself on social media actually is. Um, and it takes time to do it's, it's not something that you can just click a button and, uh, you know, snap your fingers and all of a sudden you have the magic post that, you know, has a thousand comments on it and, you know, 5,000 likes or whatever. I mean, it just doesn't happen that way. Okay. Um, it, it's, you know, again, we keep talking, coming back to this idea about social media being a place that you build relationships. And, you know, if you think about building relationships in real life, it's the same way. Um, you know, you're, when you meet somebody for the first time, you're not automatically going to be spilling your deepest, darkest secrets to them. You're not automatically just right off the bat be, going to become best friends or, or, you know, anything like that. It takes time to, you know, kind of build those relationships to put the work in to get there. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the part that kind of get, gets lost in translation a lot that people don't really think about because first, you know, Instagram's a great example of this. Um, you know, before I came on board, so I, I started here in, I believe, September of last year. And before, nobody had been really doing much with, I mean, it, we had an Instagram account because we had one, but, you know, there wasn't somebody dedicated to posting and, 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 and going out, you know, going on the platform and mm. liking other people's posts and commenting and things like that, kind of doing the community engagement stuff. And, so for a while, you know, we just had random pictures on there. There was no real rhyme or reason to it. We just kind of posted some pictures. And, um, and so now that I've started, I mean, that's, that's something that's been very important to me. And in fact, is important kind of throughout our social media platforms, but I'm just using Instagram as a good example here that, you know, in order to get the engagement that we're looking for, there's a lot of work that I had to do in order to get our Instagram profile one looking like it's an actual professional, you know, platform that people are putting thought behind and that it, that has all of the necessary information for somebody visiting our profile for the first time right. to find out what we are. <clears throat> um, you know, it's, it's kind of like 
cleaning when you're having a party at your house, you clean your house first and make sure everything looks really good so that when people get there, they, you know, you're, you don't have like the pile of dirty laundry in the corner or whatever. <laughs> so it's, you know, kind of a similar, similar idea. You have to prepare your own social media platforms, clean everything up, make sure everything looks really good mm. before, you know, you, ha before having people come, come over, start following you and engage with you. So we're, um, I think the engagement piece of it, like you said, can be lower in terms of what we're doing, because again, this is a new platform and people are still learning about it. And then for us particularly, it's because we're still, you know, getting, we're still getting people to come to the platform that have never been there before. And that's, so that's really a, a fascinating analogy, Emily. Mm -hmm that uh, <clears throat> this idea, so let me try and put that back to you in the way that yeah, I think absolutely. In, uh, in real estate crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that you want to be thinking about is having a platform that has core content. You've got this yes. kind of core informational content that exists on all the platforms so that somebody, mm -hmm. and on your website, so that when right. somebody comes to visit, there's that core informational reservoir if you like exactly and from mm -hmm. that you can now springboard into more personalized or nuanced communication with people once they gain confidence in who you are absolutely because again you know somebody who doesn't know who you are and somebody that, that doesn't know anything about what you're about if they can't find that information very quickly when they first view your your profile on social media they're not going to stay um, they're not, there's nothing there that's going to compel them to stay, to contribute, to follow. Um, you know, that there's, I mean, that's just in the same way that you, you know, if, you, if I, I always like to put myself in the shoes of, of, you know, a person who's just using Instagram or using Facebook for their own enjoyment. And, you know, if you stumble across an account that, you know, I don't know, somebody, told you about or, or however you found it and you go on there and you cannot tell what the business is. You can't right. tell what they're, you know, what, what they're offering to you, then mm -hmm. you're, why would you follow them? Um, and, and then much less, why would you engage? Yeah. You know, it's fascinating. So mm -hmm. is, have you noticed then you've been there since September, I mean, mm -hmm. globally inside the company, has there been an awareness that by building up social media, there is a positive correlation with uh, capital raising, relationship with borrowers, et cetera. I mean, is there, is there any way to tie the two things together, kind of the before and after development of the company? So I don't, you know, I don't know based on, you know, kind of the, the, like the financial aspect of things, but I will say anecdotally, Mm. A lot of our investors and borrowers tell us that they've seen our social media sites that we're everywhere that we're mm. posting They're they're, you know, they're noticing, they're seeing it. Oh my gosh, your Instagram looks so great. Um, you know, oh, this is so great. I saw this video on, you know, on Facebook, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, there's though, you know, and it would be very interesting to see if, you know, correlating kind of the financial aspect with it. But I, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things that play into the sort of the financial stuff. And in terms of campaigns, we run into right, like that. It's really but, difficult. Yeah. Right. But in, just in terms of the, just the awareness aspect and, and I mean, it's visible, you know, I mean, people have been very, you know, very, very pleased and have commented very positively about the fact that now we are very, being very intentional with our social media and people can tell. <clears throat> but it also, you know, it, I mean, that the point is that it facilitates the conversation. Exactly. When mm -hmm. you get to the point of saying, invest now. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's absolutely. It's come a long way, right? If you've got a good presence online, it facilitates that, that crux, that core ask, right? When it comes to... Absolutely, it, absolutely. Got, that's in the background. Exactly. And, and, you know, and this makes sense too, from the, from, if you put yourself in, you know, a person's shoes looking from the outside in, right? I mean, are you going to be more likely to invest money in a company that has three photos on their Instagram and they're not pretty and they're not clear and you can't figure out what the company is and there's nothing in their bio or anything like that? 
Or are you going to be more likely to invest your money with a company that has a very established presence that looks professional, that kind of has all their ducks in a row? I mean, it just makes sense. You just nailed something right Mm -hmm. on the head there. And that is that the world is changing. So it's becoming that not only is it desirable to have a good social media presence and to be communicating, but that it's necessary. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent necessary. I think that, you know, there, there, obviously there are still businesses out there that do not have um, certain social media presences. I mean, I think Facebook now pretty universally, everybody has one. Um, just because Facebook is like, you know, over, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like everybody in the world has a Facebook at this point. But, um, but you know, in terms of some of these other ones, I mean, not there's still companies out there that don't have Instagram, that that don't have um, Twitter, you know. And I just think it's a huge missed opportunity for people if they're not on social media. Because, again, social media, pretty much everybody – has it and it has it on their phone. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing about that is that when you're walking around in the street, you know, just, just going on your normal morning walk and you notice a business that maybe you had never seen before, what are you about to do? (laughs) You're about to put it in your phone and you're about to look it up. And, you know, yeah. And yes, I mean, a lot of people will do that just using Google, but if they're already sitting there on Facebook or on Instagram, you know, on their own personal stuff, they're just going to go and search for it on that platform and see if, if that business has a social mm-hmm. platform uh, or has a social uh, uh, account on that platform. Right. And so the fact that, you know, if your business does not have an Instagram or does not have a, a Twitter or does not have a Facebook, that's a huge missed opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and now more and more, social media is the place that people are going to, to look for ideas, to look for recommendations, to look for inspiration. Um, you know, you can see this in the, the rise of, of reviewing sites like Yelp, right? Um, you know, people are going online, people are sharing their experiences, people are going on there for ideas. I mean, if you think about it now, when you're, for example, looking to try out a new restaurant, you're going to Google it. You're going to see what Yelp says, or you're going to see what their Instagram looks like. Like, let, let's look at the, the, you know, kind of what their Facebook reviews are. Um, social media is the place that people are going for all of that now. And if you don't have social media accounts, it's just, again, a huge missed opportunity to reach a ton, right. a ton and of Kind people. of the point that I was making, it's not just a missed opportunity. That mm-hmm. person that looks you up and doesn't find anything. That's a what, missed customer. What are they going to do? They're going to move to the next place. Exactly. Does have exactly. A press, right? yes. Absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. All right. Let me, let me uh, roll into three final sign off questions. If that's sure. a, that's a respect for your time today. Absolutely. So three sign off questions that I ask everybody. And <laughs> okay. into, uh, I'll, I'll compile this into some kind of book or content or, or show of some sort at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the three final questions, what's the most important thing that somebody syndicating real estate online should keep in mind when they're starting off online? What's the most important thing they should be thinking about? I think the most important thing, at least in my view, is one, to remember, you know, who is your your ideal customer? Who is your ideal follower? Hmm. Um, and what do they want to see? Um, honestly, the 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 content that you put out there should not be informed by you so much as it should be informed by what you're about by your followers and by what they want to see. Um, that's the reason why people will keep coming back to you. It's the reason why people will want to engage with you. It's the reason why people will recommend you. Um, it, it's to always kind of keep in mind the person that you're trying to reach and to do everything you can in order, you know, and, and all of the things that we just talked about feed into this in order to reach those people and to give them what they're looking for. Fantastic. Yes. Mm-hmm. An avatar. An avatar. <laughs> yeah. An avatar, right? Yeah. All right. Second and not, question. you know, not, not to overly simplify that, you know, but obviously there's, you know, people 
come to do, you know, people who are in, interested in real estate, you know, it come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and interests and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it's just an, a good exercise to think about sort of this ideal person and generate, gener, generate your content kind of geared towards that person. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Now I'm going to pre-see my second sign off question with this. Okay. So you have, uh, I, I would never ask a lady how old she was, but <laughs> I have already offered so that. Good, right, so we're good. So what I like to tell my students who are typically around your age or a little bit younger mm -hmm. is that I have 30 years head start over them in real estate investment. And right, right. But that even though they're only 20 something years old, they have 30 years head start over me in social media. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. That's in mind. What has been the hardest lesson that you have learned online? Ooh, um, the hardest lesson that I've learned online. I'm trying to think of that in terms of for ground floor. I think one of the, what I, I think I'll kind of tie that back to the challenges that we were talking about kind of earlier in, in our conversation and, you know, the challenges in the fact that, you know, people don't know about this field, people don't, you know, it's still very new. Uh, th I think that is kind of difficult because there's a lot of content that, you know, we want to put out there that's much more, oh, the light went off again. <laughs> um, that's, you know, much more in depth and much more, you know, there, there's, there, there are so many analyses that we're conducting to, you know, to analyze our performance to, you know, and so that's all really great content that we do want to put out there. But the hardest part, I think, is to make sure that we're always, always putting content out there that anybody can understand. And so that's people who are, have been investing with us for a long time that are very experienced and the people who are coming here for the first time. Um, so to try to m make each and every post we do approachable to people who are, who don't know anything about what we are. Yeah, that's really a fascinating insight because really mm -hmm. what you're doing is educating. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And well, it can be hard to do sometimes. It's, it, it, it's hard to always constantly be thinking about, okay, well, what if I were somebody who knew nothing about this, would I be able to understand? Yeah. Um, and th I think that is very difficult. And, you know, we've definitely had moments where, you know, I've put something out and then had to edit it you know, and just because I used a word that maybe not a lot of people know, right. um, or people who aren't familiar with, you know, the real estate crowdfunding space, uh, you know, they, they wouldn't know what that means. But I think me being in this role is really beneficial for that. Because again, as I mentioned before coming into this role, I actually really didn't know a whole lot about real estate mm -hmm. crowdfunding. Right. So a lot of times when I'm creating posts, I'm creating it so that in my head, it makes sense. Yeah. And so I, you know, I, I kind of think about it like, okay, well, if I understand it, me, you know, not having a background in, you know, finance or, or economics or anything like that, mm. then everybody will be, hopefully be able to understand. Yeah. That's, uh, that's also a really fascinating insight. You mm -hmm. know, most of the, all the folk that I've spoken to so far, they're experts in social media Mm -hmm. And their pushback to me is, yes, but we don't know anything about real estate finance. <laughs> well, don't worry. <laughs> Nobody does, actually. So don't worry about that, right? Yeah, and that's, that's the whole point of why we're, you know, or not the whole point, but, you know, a big part of why we're on our social media channels is to help, you know, in, educate people and help them learn, you know, not just about us. I mean, of course, obviously, we want them to know about us as an option, mm -hmm. but just the fact that this is a, a, a field that exists and that, hey, maybe this is something you should be thinking about becoming a part of. And hey, you know, look at us. We, we just happen to be a platform that does that. And we can, we happen to be able to help you out. All right. So my last question, mm -hmm. uh, what are your key daily habits to be successful online? Absolutely. So this is a great, great question. And um, this is something I'm actually, that I tell a lot of people. Um, I have pretty much three main points that I do every day or that I, you know, tell people that they need to do every day. One of them is you need to carve out, you know, some time, not 16 hours, you know, just maybe like an hour 
um, carve out some time every day just to review your social media accounts and make sure they're consistent, make sure they're clear, um, make sure they're up to date so that you're not saying one thing on Facebook, but saying something completely different on Twitter, which is also completely different from your website. Um, so just, you know, carve out a little bit of time to make sure that, you know, the, the, the things that are in your profile are still accurate and that they're consistent across the board. Um, then also carve out some time every day to engage with your community. So respond to any messages that you've received, respond to any comments, um, you know, check in on any groups that you're a part of, see what's going on there, see if you can add to the, that conversation, you know, check in on what the people you're following are talking about to see if, you know, there's maybe a chance for you to kind of uh, continue it to foster the relationship there. Um, so, you know, carve out some time to, to engage with your community. That's, you know, again, as we have touched on multiple times, social media is about being social. And so that's a really, really important part of what your daily routine needs to be. And then finally, remember always to sign off. <laughs> easy, you know, it's, it's, it's super easy. It has happened to everybody. It's super easy to get caught up on Instagram or Facebook. You know, you're just scrolling on your phone for forever. Um, and, you know, so because of that, it, it, it can be very easy to get burnt out. It can be easy to, you know, feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing, you know, I don't have as many followers as this person or my business isn't doing as well as this other business is. Um, it's really easy <laughs> to kind of fall into those traps. So it's always really important to give yourself a break and to give yourself time away that you can, you know, focus on your own things or focus on other work you need to do. Um, so that's, that's my final one is to just always remember to sign off. It's, it's at the end of the day as well, you know, it's just Facebook. It's just Instagram. You're there's, you know, nobody's dying. You're not completing brain surgery. Like it's okay. It's okay to sign off for a little, while, you know, I really like that. Emily, what's an enormous pleasure talking to you. Thanks. So Absolutely. Very yeah, much. me too. Me too. I, I've, I've loved ch chatting with you and I'm um, super excited to see the finished product and I really appreciate you having me on. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Take care. Well, that was Emily Johnson, content manager at the uber successful real estate crowdfunding site, Ground Floor. To see the short video highlight clips for this show, as well as for all others in this series, go ahead and connect with me on social media, on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, where you will find me under either my name, Adam Gower, or under Gower Crowd. And you can also find links to all of those at gowcrowd.com forward slash podcast. Hey, thanks for listening. And I'll see you in the next episode. And thank you, Emily, for being such a superstar for doing this podcast with me today. And for now, this is Dr. Adam Gower signing off.